some noise. Let him hear you at home. Yeah, how are you tonight? Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Harmontown. I'm here for Jeff Davis. We miss you, Jeff Davis. I am Brandon Johnson. I am so happy to see you. Let's get started. Welcome to the stage, the master commander, Spencer Crittenden. That dude ain't no joke. That's the real deal, y'all. We couldn't do the show without this man. Please welcome to the stage, the mayor of Harmontown, Mr. Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. It's uh, it's October. It's officially October. Oh, 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 oh. I yeah. The idea was that maybe I would have rapped. I forgot. I didn't even think about it at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a doom doom. 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 Rapping, rapping all the time is the name of the game. I like to fuck your mama so hard her hair's like a mane. Okay. Whoa, oh, yeah. and leopards come round and round. I do I wait to do it? And your booty got found in the treasure chest at the bottom of the sea. And I said, Who's that pussy? It belongs to Dancer, break down. I'm never taking chances, sir. I'm going to your mama's pussy in a bus and. Okay. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <sighs> oh. So out of breath and so fat. And and for and, and for any of the ladies that happen to be joining us for the first time tonight, I, I'm. So, you know, that's not the pussies aren't for driving into. Uh, <laughs> Least of all with a bus. There's nothing. How did this begin? I, I don't know. Like it's. I, we've been doing the podcast for about seven years. Our guest tonight has been doing. Uh, uh, it's like it's basically like a sister podcast. I look at it as, because we like to feminize our enemies. Um, no, I. Uh, I don't know why that is. Why I, I think I think that's fun. I think that's our like worshipfulness of the feminine gender. Like we have sister cities and sister productions and sister, like when we call things. I think it's when they say like a battleship is a she, you know. I think we're. I, I think that's like it's us trying to be flattering to women. I hope so. Isn't I it? do it's hope like so. We 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 lo- we we we. It's it's a good thing. So it must be a girl, because it's soft, like a like a like a, a one thing that makes us better than we can be, like a battleship with big guns. Look at her. Look at her big guns. Look at those big guns that girls got. She's gonna she's gonna blow the fuck out of our. Enemy city, oh. our brother city that we hate. Like with it, we're gonna ally with our sister country and fucking shoot our tits all over that fucking enemy country. Because the, we're we're better and so we're women. I don't know what, what we're I doing. I wish, with it. man. I really do wish that was true. <laughs> and then and like, then some people come along and go, hey, maybe I want to I want to do some weird shit with pronouns, and we're like, fuck you. That's crazy. We're we're crazy with pronouns. We, we are do crazy weird with shit pronouns. with pronouns. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. We're still trying to figure out what we should do to not offend each other when we speak to each other. That's yeah. Gonna, that's gonna take a little while. Human race is like a little uh, uh, thinks it's smarter than it is. So we're like, fuck, we got language and shit. This is how you talk. Yeah. But so far, it hasn't really worked out. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still working our way through pronouns, I think. And is that how English works? English is a yeah. garbage dump. That's why it's successful. English is the language that said polystyrene is welcome. Like, like, like yeah, we've been over this. I've, I've, I listened to four podcasts about the history of English, so I'm an expert. Uh, I don't know, but it's, um, it's, it dominated the planet because it's content with the lowest of places. It'll take a fucking inlet from any any river, <laughs> like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just like a diarrhea canal that connects the earth, and uh, that's why it dominates. Also, it's spoken by first world empires that can blow you up if you don't speak right. Um, anyways, uh, I'm fat. I got fat. I, 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 like, I'm, t- I'm telling. I'm, I'm becoming now this person. I'm like. I'm like. I'm like. I got. I'm, I'm fat because I, I'm working out, and then now I'm now I'm in the thing. I'm in the. Uh, I'm in the. Uh, th- the atonement with the father chapter of uh, Amy Schumer's "I Feel Pretty," where 
like I felt good for a while, so I met with the goddess of, uh, I, was, I was like, yeah, I did it. I'm like exercising every other day and I feel good. I feel the feeling that people, that you feel, you fa- it, 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 it's just, it's it's an inter- it's a good it's an interesting movie it's uh it's got, got some like there's some actually like it, I, I can understand why like why it wasn't like a swish nothing but net kind of like perfect like the times we're going through right now how could you that fucking hoop is on the move um, and, but but it's 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 definitely worth watching because like there's some actually profound grounded shit that happens in that movie because the conceit is just that she hits her head and she she doesn't like they don't they they show her like looking at her body yeah. when she wakes up and yeah. like but they don't do the fan they don't like yeah. her point of view is that her arms instead of looking like this look like that so they don't they, use a model instead of her they use her and she doesn't say look at my boobs they're so blank shaped you know she right. doesn't say look how much blanker my legs are she just says like my legs are amazing she doesn't and, and 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 so like you, it's like a nuanced thing because it's like, w- what if the way you looked, which is fine, what if you could believe that? What if you just believed that the way we think we would believe that if we looked like so and so on the cover of whatever yes. magazine? And the answer is a lot of confusing jokes because like it, to me that movie's one flaw is that the world doesn't. I don't know what the world feels like. Sometimes the world is like trying to talk people into thinking they're ugly in that movie. And then, but then there's like these beautiful, like I think the, like there's like the scene where she meets the the guy, like the meet cute of that scene is actually really interesting because it's very realistic. Like the what if of like, what if, what if Amy Schumer thought she was like gorgeous and then yeah. she's like, oh, is this how it happens? Like a guy starts talking to her and then he's just confused by how like yeah. aggressive she is, Rory but Scola. not... But it, but in a way that I was watching as a guy, I was like, that is attractive behavior. Yeah. Like, like no matter, and that that does make all the difference. Like, like which is what people are always telling us. Like, you just have to think that you blah 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 and act like you look how you all this stuff. Like, it's it's very complicated stuff to me. People are really big on like confidence in other people because we're kind of fascinated by how conceit. We, we love confident you know? people. Yeah. We definitely, but we also love to like hit them in the face with bats. Yeah. Like we don't, like. Don't be too we, confident. We like to warm our hands over them, but then we will also like put our cigarettes out in them, pour yeah. our beer into them, kick them. Yeah. Like, 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 and that's another interesting thing about I Feel Pretty is they do go, it's, 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 it, it does track, there's a, like, unlike a lot of movies that are, have a simpler concept, like, I, like, like it does take you around the wheel where you're like, oh yeah, okay. So one of the fantasy about feeling pretty is like we all have this thing in our head that's like, if I looked like so and so, and you pick you whoever, like you might not pick Jeff Davis. Tom Cruise. <laughs> you you might pick somebody for a d- totally different reason, but whatever that person is in your head, if I looked like this person, then the reason that would be great is because then. I would be able to blank, and I think blank is pretty much universally stop worrying so much about everybody else, which we think is a service to other people because we tend to be toxically insecure. Like me coming out telling you I feel fat. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? That's me wiping my ass on you. You're like, I just have your fat shit on my face. Like, what am I? I you know, you look great. What am I doing? Why am I doing this for you? I have shit to do at home. Like, I have dogs that need me. Like, why are you a famous rich guy? I'm fat. Like, no, you're not. What, 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 fuck you. Anyways. But also your friend can do that to you. You do that to other people. Uh, we, we, we are most familiar with insecurity as a thing that, that if it was gone, we would be like super people. Yep. But you, the, the, it is, the anxiety is why we are good people. We, and so it, it, it seems like a no-brainer to talk about this, but they, they do a pretty good job in that movie of like <laughs> she starts like, she becomes a prick like in all the right ways, like like the where she's sort of like yeah, she's like okay, she's like trying to help her friends, her now whom she now thinks are her less attractive friends, yeah, and their models, and she's like trying to help them, like people like hot people help ugly people in movies, where it's like come on, just let it out, you gotta fucking do it, and they're like to them, they're like why are you being such an asshole? It's kind of fun to think about, it anyways. Ah, two Harmons up. Watch that and Mandy and uh, maybe, I don't know, something about ants. Keep it educational. (laughs) Two Harmons up.
They don't, they don't make, they don't make, they don't make stuff about insects anymore. Like I, when I was a kid, I just want to watch. They did. They don't, don't ask for that back. You remember the bees with the Jerry Seinfelds and the no, ants no, 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 no. I, I, the, I don't mean like when the bee, when you find out bees take the bee subway and have bee relationships. <laughs> I, 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 and, and got bee laid off in the, yeah, the. I, I, I mean like actual like like British guy like no music and oh. just like like twenty minutes of just watching fucking writhing insect bodies like moving around and then a yes. and then a John Cleese guy going like the 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 yellow jacket has returned with news from the colony <laughs> using an intricate uh, wag of its abdomen. It's thorax moving in shapes so precise that <laughs> MIT uh, departments were unable to decode it all the way. <laughs> this intricate alphabet, if it were in English, would have 550 <laughs> letters and be 700,000 words long or something. And you're like, what? The wiggle butt language. And, and then they, they explain everything. Oh, a new queen is on the way. And so it's time to sting her competitors to death. And like, like they show everything. <laughs> Like they show ants like walking through the tunnels and like how come we could do that in the 70s and we can't do it now? We can, we just don't want to anymore. We're like, oh, we get we 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 get ants. Yeah. <laughs> I want to take this big foot. Well, what's his name? Uh, his Attenborough guys. Like, get those cameras out in the middle of the North Pole. Let's watch. Let's watch these uh, seals uh, have a wet dream. Like, I I, 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 just, I don't care if that's more rare. I like the ant stuff. <laughs> I, find, oh, I like ants. Notice how the seal rolls on its back and humps the air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm so whiny. I, I don't want, I don't know what part of the other, the other thing is like, by the way, I'm, I'm happy. I don't know why I've come out of like, part of it is like, what are you supposed to whine about? I, I, like, like, and I'm not, I'm not a whiny person. <laughs> I don't like that kind of laugh. <laughs> that, was, that was so clearly involuntary that... Yeah. Was that? Oh, that was you. Okay. Wait, are you? Someone you're not, just you're won a brand no, new TV. <laughs> are you Nova's dad? But you, oh, okay. I thought it was a. I, was, I found. I found. You know, Nova's. Nova's very young, and like her dad. I don't know. She probably doesn't want people to know. She. They. God damn it. And Harmon, then don't make a big deal out of the pronoun thing because that's also a thing that you do. You fucking wipe your ass all over people. It's just fucking just, Harmon. You stop talking what, about it. <laughs> you saw which side I was on. Uh, <laughs> all right, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got my notes. Okay, here are my notes, and then we're gonna bring out our guest. Okay, here's the awesome. thing. All right, so, uh, well, this is this belongs in a segment. It's called things that I I'm not allowed to complain about because I'm. And actually, honestly, not even poor people are allowed to complain about what I'm gonna complain about. But play a play a play a little music cue like it's a segment like things I can't complain about. Oh yeah. I'm a British in the 80s. Dan Harmon's not allowed to complain about this. The same way I'm not allowed to have angst. Because it's 1981 and everyone is doing fine. <laughs> We're gonna learn 30 years from now how poor you can be. Right now, poor means living in the goondocks. Uh, okay, come on, Just knock it off. Oh. Read my mind. <laughs> living in the goondocks was the cue. <laughs> <laughs> Who would fuck that up? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think I'm gonna sing about the Goonies for 40 minutes? What kind of podcast do you think this is? The goondocks. Some shit your old grandfather says before he has a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> they called it the Goondocks and the Goonies. Uh, the uh, I just like I had a little, like like look when we order the food now with the you get it the brought brought to your house. Are you familiar with this? So they get the styrofoam cups, and it's like, all right, we're all taking a hit for Mother Gaia. Like, we're like, yeah, put it in some styrofoam. Yeah, put a plastic lid on it. All of us is like, look, we're, we, we're humans. We got shit to do. Sorry, Earth. Like, uh, payback's a bitch. Like, you, <laughs> you fucking tried as hard as you could to kill us forever. Like, like, ever since we were amoeba, you were like, better be a better amoeba, or you're going to get eaten by a, a bigger amoeba. And we're like, it's true. well, we would rather just hang out. And, and God's like, or Earth, I'm sorry, Earth. Uh... <laughs> 
Earth, Earth was like, f fine, like be a regular amoeba, like, have fun being studied by the people that evolve out of you a billion years from now. And we were like, all right, I think your math's wrong. All right. <laughs> the, so we, so we, we make these like things, like, I'm sorry, our guests are waiting. And I, I, I just, uh, one guest. Why are I, you I, not allowed to complain about these things? Because listen, you'll tell, you'll know when I complain about it. All right, them. let's. When they when they deliver the the liquids, the soft drinks, and it's it's it, and they and they <laughs> they have taken the time at the restaurant, because okay. hey, who we're all on the same team, right? Nobody wants your drink spilled, and it's moving on the go. It's being delivered to you, like. But they're not thinking about us. They don't give a fuck what happens after they leave, which is why they put a big piece of scotch tape over the hole, the straw hole. These lids are designed for transport. I knew I wouldn't have your sympathy. I called your silence in advance, you silver leg fucks, you judgmental. I said I'm not allowed to complain about it. Now let me complain. These lids should either have holes in them or not. I would, I would. Where I would, are you going that they're putting scotch they, tape? You get the drink and you're like, ah, the food's here. Thank God. And they're like, yeah, thank God. I got a million orders to do. Everybody's, everybody's got priorities. Everyone's got better things to do than to make sure your drink doesn't spill. And their technique, they, the shit rolls downhill. They're like, <laughs> you get the thing and you're like, ah, time to put the straw in. What the fuck? There's a fucking scotch tape. Do they have a dispenser on the shelf above the thing? Or did they make like a shift of people take a box and they go like, this will be for deliveries. Just buy, just buy the whole list lids and say to people, or make like a co collector's item thing and be like, we, we don't want anything to ever spill and you should benefit from that too. Here's a football shaped cup that you can throw and it won't spill, but it like, it fucking converts into a thing and you can leave it on your porch and we'll give you a refund. I, I'll, 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 uh, let me wet my beak in this like efficiency thing. It just feels a little bit like a fuck you. They're like, well, I, all I know is if I spill something, uh, if, if your dr liquid gets anywhere, then that's on me. And so here, I solved my problem. Good luck. <laughs> like, because you can't take a bag and uh, I saw you roll your eyes at me, sir. I, I know you think I'm petty. I know you think I'm petty, but I, I, I said I was petty. So was this like... is not pettiness. He was like, I can't but believe this it, motherfucker's it, bitching about a sippy cup. It would serve them right if when you got your food, you like said, hold on a second, and you looked in as if to count your tacos, but <laughs> you don't even care about the accurate taco count. You actually go, oh, hey, could you, uh, could you untape the straw holes? God damn it. Because it usually takes me about 20 minutes. <laughs> Because I don't know if you've ever put scotch tape on a, on a fucking lid. <sighs> you guys, look, nobody gets me. I'm, I, I like, I'm telling you, if I was running this world, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, before, before childhood hunger, we got to fix that tape shit. <laughs> I, bet, I bet half of childhood hunger is somehow related to this. I, <laughs> okay, one more thing, and then I'll bring out our guest. Uh, I, I, here's okay, a genius idea. You, this is like you can have it. I got enough to do. Somebody go write this up and get the people attached and do it. So, <laughs> Tom Hanks, beloved actor. Yes. Been with us for a long time. He's God bless. we've we, we've been with him when he was a, a young whippersnapper, a bosom buddy. All, a, a, a maze monster all the way up to uh, through a Philadelphia all the way to Captain Robert Phillips and uh, uh, to, uh, beyond beyond his road to perdition led him to he's 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 lived a full life um, one of his many roles was a, a child who wished that he was a little older I'm saying now it's time you can use him we can do this big two colon small Let's go. Let's fucking I go. I actually got the idea go. from the I Amy Schumer this. movie. What is this? Let's go. This sounds amazing. In the Amy Schumer <laughs> movie, they reference the big movie because they're like, okay. well, I'll cite your references because she's wishing she was pretty. But like, and then I was like, oh, yeah, they should. And I was explaining to Cody, like, oh, they're doing the big reference because of the thing. And then I was like, I'm old. I should, they should make a, they should do one of these called I Feel Young. Ha. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, big, b reverse big. Oh, big two, colon small. My audience is gonna love this. Yeah. yeah. 
and she's like, you have an audience? I'm like, well, the people that show up on Monday, like, I don't know what you call them. Friends? Frenemies? Now, judges. I don't want you to give. <laughs> My judges. Oh, you like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get along. Ah, my judges are here. <laughs> that feels like a healthy, honest description of this relationship. <laughs> Your honors, uh, my next guest might make you like me, but I can't help it if you don't, because you're out of order. <laughs> I, at, the, at the end of this podcast, I will throw myself on your mercy, as I always do, and we'll see what you decide at some point. And I will stop you from doing that, because I am the bailiff. I'm, yeah, well, I'm, 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 like a, I'm like a crazy, I don't know, I just, uh, I'm, like a, I'm like the Senate. I don't know, I just control everything. I, <sighs> now I made us depressed. Uh, <laughs> oh, am I guilty of that? Fuck you, people. I mean, if it pleases you. <laughs> All right, our next guest, sister <laughs> podcast. I mean, like, we've been doing yeah. it forever. I, I, I mentioned this a couple of uh, episodes ago where I was like, I, you know, I, I did my impression of him, I, and I said mid-impression because I knew that somehow this connection was going to get made, and I did, really did not want it to reach him in an offensive way. I said, hey, I'll fly you out, come out, do a thing. I don't know if he took me up on that or if he was here anyway or whatever, <laughs> but Levy put it together. Like yes. It was like the next day or something. It was like... They're coming, He's got, and I, 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 uh, 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 this, this podcast has been on uh, as, as least as long as this one. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with it. I fall asleep to it every night in spite of the, the titular warning not to or, or the titular uh, brag that you're not going to. Uh, uh, please welcome the creator and host of uh, award-winning podcast, The No Sleep Podcast, Mr. David Cummings. <laughs> everybody. I'm sorry about how long I made you wait. I, I, I said the same thing I say to every guest. I said, oh, and then I come out and I talk for five, maybe ten minutes. <laughs> it's probably been 20. I'm just thrilled to be on the episode about fat people with big tits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Feel right at home. I was on a podcast <laughs> that tingled me to the bone. That was my, sorry, you've been listening to me do my impression of you all day today. Because we hung out all day, really. Dan and I are BFFs now. <laughs> we did some, is it okay to tell people that we did some recording today? Yes, absolutely. You uh, had me on, you have two podcasts. Or, or is the other one yours, or is it just you're affiliated with it? And it's, are you a mogul? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm what they call in LA, Dan. I'm an EP. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the other one's called, again, Nights. Darkest Night. Darkest Night. Created by the genius Alex Aldea, who's here tonight. He's uh, <laughs> Yay. the Phil Spector of podcasts. That's right. Uh, yeah, and we recorded at Capitol Records, which was really impressive. That was kind of a power move. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty impressed, too. I felt uh, all I wanted to do was take photos of all the sound booths and the mics and everything. Yeah, and we spoke into a crazy binaural uh, microphone that's shaped like a human head. You know those ASMR uh, things on YouTube and the people are like, let me rub a, rub a hairbrush on, on, on you? Uh, and and they, 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 they're talking, or some of them are talking into, it's like the expensive one looks like a mannequin head made of onyx and it has ears and a nose. They have a, why does it have a nose? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, sorry, anyways, but, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you had me play a part in, 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 a, in a no sleep. Yes, that's right. On the next episode, and, and the current episode that just came out on the weekend, we started a three-part series, and Dan is going to be in part two and part three. Yeah. So <laughs> make sure you listen to that. It was really hard in the first thing we did, because it was like a dramatic uh, kind of radio show piece, and like listening to you. By the way, your voice, when, you, when you're just talking normally, when you're like, I wouldn't, you don't have this like, like you, it's you. You you do this like performance voice that sounds so distinct, but then you sound completely like a normal. 
<laughs> do, do, are you aware of that shift? Do you like put a clutch pedal in and go like, time to give it to them to the max? <laughs> Well, you always talk about me sounding like a Canadian. So normally, eh, like I sort of talk like this. Eh? <laughs> That's not, so, so not I, that kind of Canadian. I, to I tone that down. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, when I get in front of the mic, I sort of, you know, brace yourself for the No Sleep Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Go down low. Do the, well, do, do the intro as, as you, the, do, 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 do your intro just sort of like what you, what you say at the beginning. And I, yeah, I never remember it. Um, Here, I'll do it for you. <laughs> Fell for it. I also don't remember it, but it's never stopped me. It's time for you to lose sleep. That's not, that can't be it. That can't be it. For the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. <laughs> Tales to frighten and disturb. For tonight, there will be no, no sleep. sleep. That's it. Wow. Uh, we've got six chilling, spine-tingling terror tales for you tonight. But first, a few matters of finance. <laughs> Our regular author-reader, Casey Villajance, one of those wasn't a letter. <laughs> Has found a lump. And will be needing lots and lots of extra subscribers for us to continue our scary work. Um, uh, it's, it's, and I, I know that people are like, like, I think I, you have a adamantine. I think, well, you might, you have, you have self-esteem. You have, you have some. Not after tonight, I'll tell you. <laughs> but like, uh, you I, obviously, I would never, I would never even go into that area if I thought, I, not if I thought it would hurt. That I'm not, I won't credit myself as being a pain reader and responder. I mean, like, if I thought I was, what I was doing was hurtful, I wouldn't do it. I, I so I guess that's me telling you not to be offended. I what what. <laughs> What kind of gaslight shit is that? Don't be offended. Okay. <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I was talking to Dan earlier today, as we mentioned, bragging about Capitol Records. Um, but yeah, Dan was <laughs> commenting on the show and talking about my Canadian accent. And you did that, I think, two or three episodes in a row. And a lot of friends, a lot of people listened to that. And so people were contacting me and they're saying, hey, dude, are you okay? <laughs> I... Don't let Harmon get to you, man. I'm sure he didn't mean anything by that. Really, really, don't let it get to you. It's all cool. And I'm thinking, these people are worried that I'm going to be upset because I sound like a Canadian. I am a Canadian. <laughs> you people think it sounds terrible, or you think yeah. it's an insult, but no. Yeah, it's I a, mean, it's a we... thrill to sound like a Canadian. Hey. Well, when you're Shit. a country that, has, that has, has never made a single mistake... Uh, you look around you and you just want to help people. <laughs> Those guys talk weird. Let's let them have it. Let's hold them to a higher standard. Nobody down here talks weird. Uh, it's it's not it's not it's it's not weird. It's super soothing. I I, I think that the, when I well I'm from Wisconsin, so the uh, the the uh, I, the the treatment of vowel sounds is a little related. I find it to be more lullaby like. Like like the the making love to vowel sounds. I I truly love it. I know you, you nobody wants to hear about the word a boot and that that oot and a boot and all that stuff because it's like so it's like making mime jokes now. It's like so played out. But at the same time, it's like such a I get a little dopamine spike when a word comes up that 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 you just pronounce that way yeah. because it feels like a an uncle or a father or something is like it's it feels it feels friendly. And so this business of horror feels very nurturing. It's basically like it's October, so you know what I what I learned from Campbell is that trick or treat is it got, like all of our Halloween tradition is all about this this it's the duality. It's like not just like hey uh, uh, knock knock who's there torture ah! like 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 that's what sometimes what horror becomes. But like this idea of like sit down in front of this fireplace. 
I'm a nice guy, but I want to tell you about someone that'll eat your fucking guts out of with a straw. And it's kind of like more effective because you're like, I didn't want to have to warn you about this. <laughs> But the truth is, there's a crazy corn-toothed Eskimo man. <laughs> oh wait, Eskimo. That's not. That's that's politically easy, incorrect. Easy, easy with the Eskimos, man. Sorry, I, I, that, that that word flew out of my mouth. Um, uh, speaking of which, though, I was also telling you that because you're a sister podcast, born at the same time, uh, I didn't. Ha I don't have this experience because I haven't binge listened to our podcast. But listening to yours go through these recently rapidly shifting times was very interesting to me. Do you remember your first episode where you very exuberantly, like a very, just enthusiastically, like really, you had heard about the concept and you were really like into it and were like, you loved the idea and you were introducing it to the people and like, we are, we, the, uh, if you'll go on the web page, we now have something called a trigger warning. Um, and it was like, it was like you had just heard about it and it was like disco. Like, like it was like, like, oh, this thing. And, and like me at that same time, do you remember that, you know, adding that and being happy about it? And I don't remember being happy about it. That's the weird thing. I well, think that you were behind it, that you weren't, you weren't well, like, oh, apparently you have to put trigger warnings. It wasn't like that. It was like, I felt to me like you were like, I heard about this concept of, of letting people know where they are or aren't, you know, going to be comfortable so that people can mind their own fucking beeswax. Right. Um, and you were like, sounds really logical and, and uh, like practical to me. And I guess I must be a really quintessential polite Canadian because inside I felt like, fuck these people. What are they? This is oh, a really? horror <laughs> podcast. What are you talking about? Trigger warnings. <laughs> and so, and that, because then the following episode, it was like, it was like this class, like, this is what we were all going through. It was sort of like, there was this first round of like, go to the website, you'll see a new thing called a trigger warning. Right. A trigger warning is a warning. So it was just sort of like, it's just like, it was like not a big deal, like nothing's happening, no bowing, no scraping, nothing. But then the following episode was like, look, here's the thing. <laughs> The reason I did a trigger warning is because, it, and you could, the unspoken story was that actually what had happened was this avalanche of yeah. of maybe understandable but ultimately like bad target, like because you're just trying to do the right thing, like that you had been there had been this backlash that obviously yeah, people yeah. Are listening to horror podcasts, their nightmare was hearing you use that phrase because it meant something different to them. They had a different relationship with it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so you remember that time is my question. I'm oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I remember the time. And yeah, it was, I got a whole bunch of emails. It almost seemed like a concerted effort by people to say, you've got to be more sensitive to your listeners and you've got to warn people. And a lot of it was based around very understandable topics. Like, not that we're not a show that's going to highlight stories about rape or child molestation and stuff like that. But we might imply that in a story. So I can get how some people would I, want that. Well, yeah, I know. I think, a I mean, I'll, I'll uh, uh, acting as the opposite of your publicist or agent, I would say, yeah, no, this is a genre that is festooned with pedophilia and rape. I, I, it, yeah. It, yeah. Because it's, it's, it's like, it's horror that is being written by people who are, um, they're off the chain. They're, the roots come through Reddit forums and things, and people are exploring really what scares me, what will therefore scare a stranger. And there's an authentic, campfire stories begin as that. It, it would have been outrageous to ask a parent via an affidavit or something if a, if you're like, hey, your kid's going to be at summer camp. Is it all right with you if I tell him this? I'm going to tell him a couple stories. I've written the synopses here. You're like, what the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> Two teenagers, <laughs> lover's lane. My child is 10 years old. What are you talking It's It's not planned. It's like very tribal and like, like horror has always it it, it 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 has its roots in I mean you what draws you to horror you talk more than me about it like uh, I just like listening to it and I don't know why. Well, I mean, in terms of horror, it's always been a genre that I like. But when I grew up, when I was young, I would lie in bed on Sunday night and there was a radio show in my hometown of Toronto, and they played old uh, old time radio shows like Lights Out and Suspense and that type of thing. So I was introduced to horror in the audio format. So it was the magic of, you know, if, if you watch a horror movie and there's a creepy basement, you're seeing the director's right. imp impression of their creepiest basement. But if you just, you're listening to a story and they say, I walked into a creepy basement, the listener is going to imagine 
uh, what their yeah. creepiest basement looks like. And so their imagination draws them into the story. So, Did yeah, those they, shows use sound effects? Oh, yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah. if I yeah, watch a if I watch an Eli Roth movie, I, I'll I'll be like, well, I don't I don't know if I want to like I need more of a story than this, which means, unfortunately for the horror director, that I basically want it to be more like Jaws or ET, you know. And maybe that director is like saying, well, I just want to make a movie that'll like freak you out, gross you out, take you to a crazy, dark, demonic place that you can't wait. That your return threshold is running out of the theater and telling your friends, I survived watching this movie, and and artists should have a right to, they, they shouldn't be bound to my definition of what a story is. However, when I watch a movie, I, I, I go to a movie with those expectations. And I do not go to books, which I don't read, um, with that expectation. Therefore, I definitely do not go to a stranger's, half of the time anonymous, like crazy, like I just wrote this to to kind of fuck with you, uh, to fuck with myself. And so a lot of the themes will have to do with there are heavy themes that emerge that put you in an uncomfortable place are abortion. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's such a huge, like, it's almost because, like, where else would you go except, like, the idea of children, children being threatened, like, the, the stakes can only get so high before, <laughs> like, some, the, like, some theme of that. You, your, your stories, you, like you said, they're not, they don't go there. You would never be mistaken for being into the things that you're supposed to be scared of. But right, they have right. to be able to go there in order to enjoy it. Yeah. I think that, I, I don't know what, it, I, I, know, I know that I could never, I can't, our friend John Grills, who does the Creepy Podcast, which is more of just uh, how I found your podcast, he, he, he told me, because I was like, I don't think I could ever write horror. I don't, I don't know, I wouldn't know how to do it. And he said, just make your, just scare yourself. Like, do the same advice as, with comedy as you would for horror. And, I, and then I think, Oh yeah, no. I, then I couldn't do it because I when I when I think about being scared, I get scared. <laughs> so my stories would up. be about like someone made me go to a scary thing, <laughs> or and and and, and, I, and I would I, I would and I said no, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go to that scary thing. I don't like being startled. Um, and and then they felt bad, and that made me feel bad. Well, yeah, uh, it's. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so I like listening to other people who go there and like, I'm a, a proctologist that likes to do extracurricular work. And I'm like, whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> that's not a real example. I just. Well, yeah. And the other thing, too, when it comes to writing horror, not that I do a lot of it, but you think that one of the big things about horror is if there's a twist or if there's something you don't see coming. And that can be the real scary point. But if you're writing it, well, you know what the twist is, so you can never put yourself behind the scenes enough to know that what right. you know to experience that twist. Yeah. What scares you? What scares you? What scares me? Um, the the thing. Well, it's not so so much of a broad theme, but okay. the thing that creeps me out the most, and you see it a lot in horror films, is that someone's standing outside and they look up at their house, and there's a face in the window. And it, there's something about, it's either you're inside the house and you look out the window and you see somebody standing in your yard, or you see a face in the window. That always gives or me Or like the, the house you just got out of. That you were, like, there's stories where uh, there's weird shit going on in the house, and then finally the person does what you would do, which is they just get the fuck out of there. They're like, I'm going to stay in a motel. And then, they, and then they drop their keys and they look up and there's a fucking person in the window. Yeah, yeah. It's like almost it's Jeez. almost scarier like it's like that, remember that classic uh, urban legend about the the trucker with the headlights yeah. the the punchline of that is that you lived but it's scarier it's like thinking about uh you, there was a dude in your back seat right right uh, uh because it, because a part of that is like uh, or that's like the uh, red eyeball behind the keyhole or whatever the red room like yeah. that's another classic where it's like I looked through the keyhole and it was just red all I saw was red I I heard that hotel room was like haunted and I looked through the red but I already blew it. There's a, there's a red eye. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I can't write horror. I don't know what I'd do. If for me, it's a, I, I, it would be all about cutting. Like, I, it's a, like I don't even know where I'd go. I, I re, there was Whatever a, there scares was a, you. What scares it's you? It's a, a surgery. Uh, just basic, like a bees. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 people conversations. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, the alt right, uh, uh, I mean, home the, invasion, what uh, would, what losing would, Cody, uh, 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 what would uh, disappointing you, my dogs. What would make you run? What? 
What would make you run no questions asked? Everything. I've never asked questions. If I can't, I'm not allowed to talk, I start running. I, I like, <laughs> hey, you know why I'm not running? Uh, shut up. <laughs> uh, have, yeah. you, have you ever lived through the horror of when you, know, like you go to a fast food restaurant and they give you a soft drink and there's like this prophylactic over the hole? <laughs> you <ever see? laughs> run. Terrifying. Run. Are you implying in all of your Canadian grace that that piece of scotch tape is doing me the service of keeping germs out of my uh, my Thai iced tea? Is that like like no? You're saying, by the way, you're welcome for keeping those germs out of the hole. No, I th- I, it's just to protect them. They don't want to have to br- spill it, and I don't know. I've, I've never experienced that, so I. Oh, it's, it's so hard. New. Like you're so, and you're like peeling at this thing, and the the tape just breaks. <laughs> It's something, it, it breaks into little strings. Like, I, I, it, it, it turns into, you're like pulling threads of scotch tape. I'm telling you, look, why don't you kids get a job? Um, well, I'll, they got to make, like, Capri Sun straws where you could just, like, they have a point to it, and you just go, bam, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can't tell me that. Thank you. That yes, everybody applause and stand <laughs> while you're doing it. <laughs> Look you at you! I guess look that was a good easy idea. Easy Shark Tank, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> people, people come up with stuff. There just isn't enough pushback from the community. We need to focus on how hard it is for. Yeah, yeah, I know. You can't complain about this stuff anymore because it's like, it's like, it, it's too. The world is too connected, and the, the real life became the internet. So you really can't anymore. It's not fun. Even it used to already be whiny and taboo, but you know, you can't be like. I was on my way over here, and the wait person d- did one of these things, and everyone now is just like, "Yeah, they make minimum wage. Fuck you, you fucking cocksucker!" Like, like, like <laughs> they, they, and, and then, and then a bunch of people attack them for what's wrong with sucking cock. Nothing. I just say, <laughs> if he was doing it, uh, never mind. I just the pointed straw would be good. A pointed straw. Everyone wins. Yeah. Or like, you know, they have those. They have some of them, but they're the lids that are like legitimately sealed until you really poke the Like plus. when there's a circular thing and yeah, it, yeah. like po- you poke right down in there and it's like ready made and it goes, it's like right. really satisfying. Got to be, what? It uh, exists. It's got to be a half a penny more per lid. Uh, I don't and know. And we're all going to get rich. What? Half penny at a time. Just write a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that difficult to figure out. Everyone just write a screenplay and sell it. And take that money, put it into your restaurant supplies. (laughs) And what we have left over, we build a radio for our island. (sighs) Why do I have to spell it out for everybody? I understand how money works. There's an island. Uh, so we had a, you, 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 you got a, like, like, we, you, there was a thing that, was it, did, did Rebecca write the thing that, uh, uh, and did she want f- uh, credit, uh, she just got it if she did write it. Did, yes. the, the thing, the, the thing that you, there was a thing that, that, that's written, <laughs> that we can do a performance. We, right. we, Dan, we, some people call it a script. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, In you're, Hollywood, we use your that Your team, the no sleep team, the, 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 by the way, do you call them no sleeps? The individual segments, are they called no sleeps? You go like, I have to do three more no sleeps, or this episode will be mm, frighteningly under uh, le- run time. No, Dan, we don't. <laughs> you don't call them no sleeps? What do you refer to them as? Just stories, basically. Stories. You're talking about the individual Ooh, la, segments. La. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> you should I, call them uh, naps. Like what do you th- what do you what do you what I do you- said naps. <laughs> Everybody applaud. <laughs> like what do you think do you think Rod Serling called them called them zones or like <laughs> if I just called them is like stories cuz it's not like you're going to confuse them with another thing. All right, I answered my own question. <laughs> but like we call them creep shows, the individual creep shows within a creep show. It's confusing. I'm glad that we're sharing this with our Canadian friend. Yeah. What do, what else? I guess. <laughs> what <question>. else? <laughs> you can't disguise that as good interviewing. What? What, is that? what else? Oh, well, welcome, Bob Costas. Good job. I thought I was doing poorly, but the what else guy is here. I Get out of here. Well, you're knocking off. I heard my question, and then I was like, no. 
No, no don't probably, ask that question. There's a thing. There's a thing that's been written. Yeah. None of us read it. It's been written, and it, or, you, you're a, you're a, like we can perform it, right? We're gonna perform it, no sleep yes. style. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna do a story for you tonight. Yeah. I got. We got these these tablets, but they they're locked, so I don't know how to unlock them. What's your pa password? <laughs> oh, the great Alex Aldea. Can you yell out your password and your well, pin number? Well, if you want to, could you come up maybe? <laughs> There's, yeah, we'll get some help. Alex Aldea, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Here he comes. Somewhere. Anyway. One of the sleeps. Sorry about that. Thanks. So as I mentioned, Dan was uh, talking about no sleep on the show and talking about Canada and me being a Canadian and all that. So we talked to one of our famous writers, one of our best, C.K. Walker, <laughs> beloved. And, and if, you, if you don't know, how many people here are fans of horror and Netflix enough to know about the upcoming series called The House, The Haunting of Hill House? <laughs> the great C.K. Walker is a staff writer on that series. So. We're thrilled not only that she is working with great people like Mike Flanagan and doing all these big TV series, but she still writes stories for us. And so what we decided to do, or, or CK did, was to write a short script about Canada, specifically about Canadian Thanksgiving, eh? <laughs> because our Thanksgiving is next weekend. We have it earlier than you That's folks. spooky as hell. <laughs> Anytime I would, I, the I calendars ask, change. I would ask questions about it, but I think we're going to learn about... Yes, that's right, because uh, CK wrote this script with some fun, but also with some true facts about one of the people who founded Canada, or at least got it uh, off the ground many, many years ago, and how it relates to Thanksgiving. Can we tell... Is the music... Uh Let's, uh, let's see what we got. Oh, you got, you got yeah, here. Yeah, it's got a setup. Good, that's right. Yeah! Oh. <laughs> All our music has fat beats, Dan, so you can... <laughs> Great. I guess I should get my script, too. Oh, yeah. First Nations! <laughs> Oh, by the way, Je Brandon will be playing the part of Jeff Davis. And right. This, this was, yeah. All righty here. Let's see how I can do this. All right, hosers. <laughs> so in Canada, eh, we've got this thing called Thanksgiving there, don't you know? <laughs> hey, it's offensive when you do it. <laughs> it works the opposite, because... Okay, sorry. Well, you know, it's tradition in the motherland to tell stories of Thanksgiving past from around the world. And we do it around the holidays, of course. But today, I'm in America, Los Angeles to be specific. And since Canada's Day of Thanks is quickly approaching, I thought I would tell you about a Thanksgiving of the future instead. A Thanksgiving when I extend an invitation down south to some American friends. sound effects <laughs> and his doorbell was on Canada sorry okay let us in come on David I haven't seen my balls in hours yeah I don't think that has anything to do with the weather seriously it's fucking cold hey oh boys welcome to Canada you're just in time didn't think we'd ever find the place well I'm glad to see you did sun's getting low gotta get you inside before dark Whoa, packed quite a bit for a long weekend, didn't you? Ridiculous. You travel like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's my laptop and some DVDs. What? It was a long flight. Smart, if you ask me. Not much to do and too cold to go anywhere. What's the temperature outside, David? It's about six degrees Celsius. Oh, a bit of a scorcher. Ah, <laughs> uh, can we get that in freedom units? It's like 40 degrees. Thank you, patriot. <laughs> Can I get you boys a beer? I'll take one. Damn, nice place, David. 
Smells fucking good too. Turkey? <laughs> of course there's turkey. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. Uh, it's just called Thanksgiving here. <laughs> <laughs> you got candied yams? Oh, I'm afraid not. Yeah, only in the U.S. do they put sugar and marshmallows in their vegetables. I would love to get my hands on some poutine. Uh, no poutine. <laughs> uh, pecan pie? Nope, nope, nope. Uh, Thanksgiving in Canada is a bit different than in the U.S. <laughs> How so? Other than being on a Monday. Well... Here, it's not just a Christmas dress rehearsal. <laughs> Damn. There are traditions and rites that must be satisfied. Like what? Oh, you'll see. Sit down, sit down, eat, eat. It's custom that the host tells the story of the first Thanksgiving over the feast, though I'm sure you're already well-versed in it. I wouldn't count on that. This is great. <laughs> You're a decent cook, Cummings. Yeah, definitely, but what's the green stuff at the end of the table? Ah, uh, that's mushed peas. They were served at the first Thanksgiving in Canada. So are you ready for the telling? Yeah, whatever you want. Just pass more of that Canadian gravy. <laughs> mm. Well, the story of the first Thanksgiving starts in 1574 with a pirate named Martin Frobisher. Wait, there's pirates in this story? Oh, there sure is. Frobisher had an eye patch in everything. Lost his eye privateering for the English crown. So was he a privateer or a pirate? Well, he was both. Frobisher was an Englishman who had contracts with the crown to go explore the Northwest Passage. But he also participated in piracy. Frobisher's letter of mark, basically government license to attack England's enemies at sea, was falsified. So he was a pirate. Yeah, basically, yeah. But in 1574, Martin received the Crown's approval to explore new routes to the Pacific Ocean. Through, well, though he didn't get the funding. Frobisher was forced to pursue financing through his friend and director of the cafe company, Michael Locke. America's first Thanksgiving stories have way more murder. <laughs> Jeff left and Brandon showed up. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> so Frobisher weighed anchor and took his fleet of three ships west. Because of some bad weather, he was pushed into Baffin Island and landed in an inlet that Martin named Frobisher Bay. And had the first Canadian Thanksgiving. It's really picking up out there. Yes, it sure is, Dan. <laughs> and interestingly enough, that was not the first Thanksgiving. Because while Frobisher was on Baffin Island, he discovered gold. And that was the first Canadian Thanksgiving. Mm, no, not even close. You see, happy with his find, Martin loaded up 200 tons of mined gold from Frobisher Bay and hauled it back to England to present to the Queen. He was celebrated by high society, welcomed into new circles. People no longer mocked his one eye. And Martin wanted more, so he requested another expedition to retrieve even more gold from Canada. He also peti petitioned Queen Elizabeth to be named High Admiral of the Northwestern Seas. She agreed to one request, but not the other. And Martin was forced to again beg for financing from his friend Michael Locke and the Cathay Company. Well, did he get it? Like, did he go back to Canada for more gold? Oh, he did, yes, yes. And this time he took a fleet of 15 vessels and a fine gold chain around his neck, a gift from Queen Elizabeth herself. This time, the storm that hit the expedition was truly awesome, and they limped into Frobisher Bay with a fleet of only 12. And this was the first Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, yes. Martin was so happy to make land that the 400 men on the expedition sat down to a lovely supper of salted ham, biscuits, and mushed peas. <laughs> Moose meat would have been more Canadian, huh? Oh, Spencer, no, no, no. Martin saw the moose as a majestic animal, larger and more powerful than a horse, 
He would never have thought to slaughter one for food. And that's the story of the first Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, well, yes, but there's more. Much, much more. Frobisher mined the gold and brought 1,350 tons of it back to England. Uh, is that an animal? It's a moose. Huh. I'm going to get another beer. So Frobisher was Kardashian rich when he got back to England. Well, not exactly. Frobisher returned to England with his 1,300 tons of gold. But when he anchored in London, he received unsettling news. The gold he'd brought back from Canada had been smelted. It turns out it wasn't gold at all. What was it? Iron pyrite. <laughs> Fool's gold! Yes. And he had literal tons of it. Frobisher was stripped of his title, shunned by the crown, the Cathay Company went bankrupt, and Martin's friend Michael Locke was thrown into debtor's prison. Wow. Mm, I share your wow. <laughs> Martin Frobisher was humiliated, publicly and otherwise. People laughed in his face. We get another laugh, Dan. Ha! <laughs> Accused his one remaining eye of bad eyesight. And Martin blamed Canada for the bamboozle drunkenly ranting that the only dignified part of that frozen hell was the enormous antlered creature we now call a moose. I like the Canadian Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, what happened next? Well, Frobisher died during the Anglo-Spanish War in France in a town called Brest. Well, I'll admit that story is more interesting than pilgrims eating corn in the greater Boston area. Oh, but it's not finished. God it, damn it. <laughs> it's not? What else could have, what other uh, part of the stories could there be? Ah, uh, what about Frobisher's body? Mm -hmm. His corpse is a part of the story? Yes, indeed. Upon hearing of Frobisher's death at Rest. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Elizabeth ordered his body to be decapitated and taken back to Baffin Island and buried there, so that his shame may follow him into death. Why be headed? Well, because she did not believe Frobisher should ever be able to hold his head high, even in the afterlife. Savage. Indeed. And it's said that every Thanksgiving, Frobisher awakens from hell to climb upon his antlered steed. A moose? Yes, a moose. And pass through Canada from coast to coast, visiting our homes to demand a piece of gold from every household. Wait, wait, wait. He's a headless horseman? I mean, mooseman? Yes, exactly. I really love Canadian Thanksgiving. Well, why does he do that? Well, he wishes to collect the fortune of gold that Canada robbed him of. To clear his name. Exactly. What was that? That's hilarious. So what do you guys do? Eat Yukon gold potatoes at Thanksgiving or some shit? Oh, of course not. Don't be ridiculous, Dan. We offer him gold for his harvest. Gold? Right. So like Canadian kids leave out gold schlager on Thanksgiving night or mommy's earrings? Oh, no, no. Children are put to bed long before Frobisher arrives. And you simply hand him the gold. Okay, guys, seriously, what is that? What do you mean, hand him the gold? There's a moose on the porch. On the fucking porch! All right, you have to hand it to him very carefully. Remember that Frobisher only has one eye, and he will be very angry if he accidentally drops his gold. What gold? Well, the gold you brought for Thanksgiving, of course. But... We didn't know we were supposed to bring gold to Canadian Thanksgiving. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a ah, it's a muffled door crash. Now, everybody, slowly get out your gold. 
Frobisher prefers solid metal, but sometimes will accept flakes or even gold wiring. I heard he even once accepted a book called Churchill's Gold. A book called Churchill Gold? <laughs> yes. Yes, and actually growing up in my family, well, we were very poor. In some years, we offered him simple craft dinner cooked to golden perfection. <laughs> we don't have any gold, you fucking lunatic! His head... It's sitting behind him. It's off. His, his, his fucking head's off. Well, of course it is. You listen to the story. Now, quickly, stop playing around and offer him our gold or he will kill us. We don't have any gold. What? Guests always bring the gold for Thanksgiving. Everyone knows that. Oh, guy. Oh, guy. <laughs> what if we don't have any gold? What do I do? If we don't offer gold to Frobisher on Thanksgiving, then we will be massacred, trampled to death under the hooves of his steed. It's not a steed. It's a fucking moose, man. Jesus, does anybody have a Rolex, a gold chain, a wedding ring, literally anything made out of gold? On what you pay me? Why don't you offer me your fucking Emmy, Dan? <laughs> Why the fuck would I have that with me? I didn't bring a 40-pound suitcase like Jeff. Oh, my suitcase, shit! Uh, I might have something. Let me, let me, let me see, let me, um, let me just look. Uh, Gold. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking! Gold. <laughs> It's your line, David. You, oh, it is my line. <laughs> yeah. But if you want Frobisher to say his last line again, I'm fine. Gold. Gold. <laughs> Gold. Gold. <laughs> Hurry, Je uh, <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, wherever you are. Hurry, Brandon. He has many homes to get to. His patience is thin. No, no, no. No, no, not that one. Gold. Ah! Ah! Here, here, here. Good, good, good. Bow your head and grip it tightly. Do not let him drop it. His vision is bad. What is it? What are you giving him? Jesus, Jeff, that's not gold. Shh. He may accept it. What's he doing? He, he's showing the, the DVD <laughs> to Frobisher's head. He's putting it into his bag. He's, he's accepted it. Oh, oh, holy shit. That was, that was just, man, fuck Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> what DVD did you even give him, Jeff? The 20th anniversary of the re-release of GoldenEye. <laughs> that fucking worked? Ah, oh, it was very good thinking. Frobisher is very sensitive about his missing eye. I'm sure he would like to have a golden one. That doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I think it does in Canada. I'm not surprised at all that Frobisher accepted our endowment. It was very clever, Brendan. Brendan? <laughs> oh. Christ, what is it? Uh-oh. Ah, I'm just, just going through my bag, and I, 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 I think I, I fucked up with the DVD. Oh yeah, wrong region. No, I, I didn't get to put the right one back in the case. What are you saying? I'm saying the 20th anniversary of the re-release of Golden Eye is not in the disc, and that, that, that in the case that I gave him. Well, what is in the case you gave him? Fuck. He's coming back. He's coming back. How much time do we have? Oh, not much. What do we do, Cummings? Nothing. If he doesn't have the 20th anniversary of the re-release of GoldenEye, then it's already too late. I thought I gave it to him. I tried shit. Oh, fuck. I don't want to die in Canada. Oh. <laughs> shit! God. Run! Our uh, door is so quiet. There's nowhere to run. 
I thought it was the 20th anniversary of the re-release of Golden Eye. I swear! I swear! You bring my body home to the U.S. You hear me, Cummings? Don't let them bury me in Canada. I withhold from my death screen the letter U because your country is so fond of it. They use it too much in words like a boot. I'm riffing. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. I do live through that particular Thanksgiving Day massacre. Every Canadian knows to keep a gold filling in their molar for old Frobisher, just for this very reason. Oh, and I do bring Dan's body back to the States, so you can rest easy about that. But I guess what you really want to know is what disc is in the case if it isn't Goldeneye? <laughs> And sure, I'll tell you. It's a Razzie-nominated 2008 Matthew McConaughey masterpiece called Fool's Gold. All right. Sixteen pages. Pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. I looked at the number of pages when we were at page eight. I was like, oh, shit. (laughs) I was led to believe that you gave strict requirements for what you wanted the story to be. Yeah, we keep a a tight ship around here. (laughs) Let's try, let's do some, because a a, a big part of the podcast that I like is uh, at least once per season, you do you do these uh, suddenly shocking episodes. Do they, is there a term for? Is it like flash horror, or is there like a term for the objective uh, kind of the mini 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 no sleeps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flash fiction is a common one. Usually stories that run three to five minutes long. Flash fiction, micro stories, micro micro horrors. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's do a couple. No script oh, for shit. tonight, and I'll play the David Cummings part. Okay. And then, oh Jesus. And then, uh, and then, and then, um, I don't know how we how we're gonna do it because usually they're more narrated. But um, um, uh, I'll 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 introduce one, and then uh, and then we'll go from there, and then we'll make some adjustments. All right, hit the music. <laughs> oh, I guess I guess I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, hit your music. Sorry, I would have been more polite if I knew I was talking to you. <laughs> hey, hit the music. <laughs> I'm Canadian. I wait for please and thank you. <laughs> the hourglass is almost full, and time is just about up. For tonight, there will be no sleep. This is a podcast about disturbing you for fun and profit. <laughs> With an underemphasis on the profit, which will be equitably distributed to all of the talent involved. For the health care for all those involved in this show will be universal. Anyone listening to tonight's show will have any injuries immediately healed at the nearest hospital as part of a new promotion. For tonight, there will be no oligarchy. I'm your host, David Cummings. And tonight, I will be (laughs) coming a few stories. It took that long for you to make fun of my last name? Uh, It's not making fun of your last name. It's making fun of the idea of you were were like, I got (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like we used to say in the early aughts, right? They're not racist jokes. They're jokes about racism. <laughs> it, it worked until 2006, and then, and then everything started falling apart. For tonight, there will be millennial accountability. <laughs> A few words about the trigger warning on our website. What is this music? Is this you? You are you undercutting me with shittier music than you? Wow. <laughs> this is the only music I have. You gave yourself like amazing like. Due to budget constraints. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's season eleven, episode forty-two, and tonight we've got some scary nuggets for you with authors like Jennifer Ackleby, Art Landon, <laughs> Michael Stipe, <laughs> Porky Smith, A.J. Clements, F.B. Schwartz, Arky Snookers, and Cilia Tone Tones. <laughs> A brief word about the subscription plan before we get started. <laughs> Starting in October, we will be offering an extra bonus episode for those who fill in the how do I pay blank sheet on our form at nosleepies.com. <laughs> I appreciate these donations and we'll spread them out accordingly across the tundra. I speak for the audience when I say, shut the fuck up, Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get on with the show. We've got a series of micro-fast spine tinglers tonight called Suddenly Shockers. These micro-sized postcards from the oblivion will take you on a trip to fear, but Come with postage prepaid through stamps.com. <laughs> which is being uh, subsidized by the Canadian government. I know you don't want to hear commercials during your podcasts, and we are sensitive to that. So the Royal Canadian Mounties have given us a special check. <laughs> it's all... We're, we are running like a Swiss clock up here. The, our first tale. Cuckoo clocks are often a trope in chronological imagery. These avian time tellers often say loud sounds at various hours to ring the time of day in. But sometimes the time of day is the only time you wish you had left. <laughs> Author J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> takes us through an example of what I mean in a tale read by Culpert Rupert <laughs> that will make you understand why I love my grandfather's cuckoo clock. <laughs> sorry. I don't, sorry. I will never do another episode of the podcast Aww. again. <laughs> pity, pity. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very difficult time for me because I had no time. My beloved grandfather had passed away and at the time of his death, his favorite cherished cuckoo clock stopped ticking. Cuckoo! <laughs> Power. 
Bradley. Why don't you do something nice for your grandfather's funeral? But I didn't know what to do for his funeral. <laughs> With his clock broken, cuckooing no more. I knew I had to have it repaired. Bradley, <laughs> you should hurry up and get that cuckoo clock repaired. I'm horny. <laughs> And my needs come first. And so I took care of her cuckoo. <laughs> Lovingly, sensuously, with lots of little birds popping in and out. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bradley. That takes care of that. My true Canadian girlfriend thanking me for sex. And that's when I called the cuckoo clock repairman. Hey! Make this quick. It's cuckoo clock repair season. You, you, you tell him he can't leave his cuckoo clock here no more. Hey, shut up, you, you got... fucking immigrant. Aww. I don't need any of this immigrant shit going on in my cuckoo clock repair shop. Anyways, what do you want? My beloved grandfather has passed and his cuckoo clock broke, ceased to function at the very moment of his death. Have you experienced supernatural cuckoo clock repair before? Are you serious? You know about Timothy, don't you? Are you fucking with me? Don't come I am not good, with sir. Shut the fuck up, immigrants! I'm trying to help you out. You tell me what fucking with you. Why you I'm a Canadian like fascist. Get the fuck out of here. You need me tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I got a little situation going on in the uh, back room. Anyways, sit down. You came over, right? You called and then you came over. <laughs> yes, I phoned you and asked if I could come over to your shop. All right. Sit down. You're going to want to be sitting for this story within a story. <laughs> I must know. Tell me of Timothy. Well, all I can tell you is what I've seen, I hope I never see it again. <laughs> Back in the old days when this was a mining town, nobody cared what time it was. <laughs> Eventually they found out they could mine more coal if they took a bird down put it in a cage, real cage-like, <laughs> and let it breed the fucking coal fumes. Coal fumes go up, the bird takes a dirt nap. <laughs> Only it ain't no dirt in a cage. Imagine being a fucking bird taking a dirt nap in a cage with no dirt. <laughs> Rather a fucking immigrant suffer that fate personally. But that's just me. I, I ain't can still gonna hear suffer. You. Hey, fuck you! I'm a Canadian fascist! I love Canada! I don't want anybody coming in here and fucking it up! That's pretty rare! You five, sorry I ever fucking married you! I'm sorry! You stay in your special door! It ain't so special! You could have built a better door! I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll meet the little lady later. She's, uh, quite a reveal. <laughs> Anyways. Get back to your B story. Dear God, it's not a beast. Don't dismiss. It ain't no fucking sitcom. <laughs> not a B story. Not a fucking. What do you think, George Costanza's gonna have a runner while the hitchhiker's getting killed? Like it cuts over to him and it's like, bummer. B 
B story. Don't fucking insult me. That's immigrant shit. <laughs> Anyways. So this mining town, right? right? Here's the thing. Whole town runs on coal, dig. Yes, coal. Coal is dug, yes, yes. But you can't dig the coal if all the birds die, see? So they get this idea, right? The mining industry. They think, let's put kids down there. <laughs> Cheaper than fucking birds, right? <laughs> and a kid's gonna react to coal fumes just as readily as a bird. <laughs> In point of fact, their, their lungs are notoriously weak. They're probably a more accurate and beneficial metric of coal fumes than a different species. If it's too much for a kid, I should stop digging coal. Look, I'm not defending the practice, okay? These were Canadian kids. They didn't deserve that fate. And they're worth about 75% of American children these days. <laughs> So they did it for years, right? And the coal town booms. Look, you've seen it in the paper. This town buried one story, though. Timothy. Is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> We're on pins and needles for Timothy. <laughs> yes. I, can't. I judged your 16 pages. Look at me go. <laughs> Timothy, I don't know. The scientists didn't know where they found him. And the test results didn't provide no clarity. But this kid was uh, different. First time he went down, he come up from the fume chamber saying, give me more. The kid wouldn't die, see? He just kept loving going down deeper and deeper. One after one, dozens after dozens, the Canadian coal miners started to die because Timothy wasn't dying. By the time they caught on, they grabbed their pickaxes, but it wasn't coal they were gonna mine. It was gonna be Timothy's soul. At that point, he was living down in the bottom of the mines where we call no man's land because we hadn't yet uh, 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 had an inclusive mining operation. It's now called nobody's land. It's also closed. Canada has a very good green energy policy. Like, and this is not about that. But they went down, pickaxes and torches in hand, and the other hand free. The pickaxe is getting hot from the torch adjacent to it. The custom-made handles of the torch and pickaxe doing their job of fitting snugly into one hand so that later they could be described in the telling of the story as having plural things in hand. Without a second thought. <laughs> when they got down to nobody's land, they saw something scarier than a thousand dead birds. Something scarier than the sea of child bones that had been created by the Canadian coal industry. La, 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 la. They saw Timothy's empty cage. So anyways, that's... On, a, on his anniversary, people say they... What did you say that made me alarmed? <laughs> Your grandpa died? Yeah, grandpa. Grandpa died. On Timothy's anniversary. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> they say he comes and he kills me. <laughs> and Timothy's last name, if I'm not mistaken, was Horton. <laughs> la, 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 la. 
Yeah. How come you left off the part about the horse? Shut up! I'm trying to catch up to a reference in here. <laughs> you fucking immigrant! I told you you're gonna be All dead. right, look. You've put up with enough. I can repair your cuckoo clock. I'll bump you ahead. It's called the uh, True Canadian Benefits Package. Couple of brown people that want their clocks fixed might find they're unfixable this season. Ha <laughs> I'm racist. As Canadians are wont to be. No, just the characters that have a come up it's coming. I'm not a quintessential Canadian. That's God not, damn right Listen to not. my voice. I'm a villain. Jesus. All right. Sorry. I don't mean to give notes from inside the story. I just did. I, I, you suddenly thought maybe you thought I was doing something that I wasn't doing. No, I, I hear you. But I'm going to time to reveal my wife. Oh, my God. Where is she? Now, remember, you're the narrator of the story. <laughs> I just been, uh, what do you call it, some kind of dialogue digression <laughs> within your prose. Uh, the story pays off as I open this door and you see my wife. <laughs> <laughs> my God, a smile too wide for her face. <laughs> now you see why he keeps me away. Horrifying, horrifying, but strangely arousing. That's, hey, Doc. Why are you a Doc? That's why they call it a cuckoo clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big guy. Yeah, it's hard to improvise these. You can't, they have to be written in order to have a, like, punchy ending, right? We, we try to have a punchy ending, yes. So that's why they're called a cuckoo clock. I see. I think my grandfather didn't know that story, and that's why he died. <laughs> okay, that was a good one, all things considered. That was fine. <laughs> How have we been doing this for seven years if that's what our stories are like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you try to make one up, that's what they're like. I like that. I, uh, I, 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 I did want to mention one thing. I don't want to be cloying about it, but it actually was impressive to me. Like, I was, uh, like, like, how, like I said, I was following you when trigger warnings were invented and then following you for the backlash and following you the whole time, and you've never... Whereas we've been podcasting the same amount of time, and I've just been like hitting garbage cans and swerving around, and like oh, I don't want to hurt anybody, but I hurt everybody. And uh, but you have a scripted podcast, and it's like you can you can watch the earth move beneath your podcast's feet. But what emerges? I just li I'm listening to your most recent season, and you you did Pride Week, and you did this like LGBT uh, 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 like 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 episode. <laughs> And it's like, it, it, I, I honestly, like, there's a fear in, our, in the back of my head when I think about this stuff. I'm like, yeah, but just don't, don't you know, like, it, it, like let's, not, let's not have that be adding water to something or feel like, because the, the Nazis call it virtue signaling and it just makes the, you know, it's like, it, it truly, I'm, I listen to like, like scripted horror podcasts and it's like, I, I, I'm not virtue signaling or white knighting or whatever they call it when I say, it really struck me that we we like gay voices, gay perspectives, and things like make shit like horror better because either a you have a classic story that's like a husband and wife that but it's like a husband and husband and it's like all the more like it, it because it's a horror story and the focus is on this fucked up shit that's going on you're like run grab your husband and run and you come through a visceral experience like having been trained neurologically to think of, of, of people that are different uh, as the same which is like a healing that's one kind of, of good thing but then the other thing is like when the shit goes deep and dark and earns those trigger warnings I there are like I there, there was a there was an author who was taught who was just talking about his it was like it was like a weird like like there, uh, there's a tradition in this format where it's like the person is the unreliable narrator who kind of like turns out to be your kidnapper or whatever and kind of like I don't know I'm babbling but like 
would you take over and say anything about that? Or will, 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 uh, be, like, did you, have you, what has been your experience? I don't know if you're straight or gay or anything. I, I've never bothered to ask because I'm, I've been evolved by your podcast. But, uh, but I, it's like, like, like whether you're, whatever the category you might fit or not fit into, what has been your experience with representation, uh, your obligations, your, your desires and things? Well, one of the neat things about our show is that we have a cast of voice actors, writers, producers, and they're from all around the world. And we, they all record separately and send their parts in. And we have a really strong representation from the LGBTQ community, just in the, the team that creates the show. And For so you, is it kind of incidental? Like, were you, are you, were you like a straight guy in front of a microphone going like, I like horror, let's do this horror thing, and then one by one people are like, by the way, I'm such and such, and, yeah. like, and you're like, yes and, and that's like, it's like the Muppet movie, that works. Yeah, yeah it, it, was ne it was never an issue, it was never at all. And then, as Dan mentioned, it seemed for some reason recently we did some stories that just happened to have same-sex couples. It wasn't... It wasn't a heavy gay theme. There was no gay sex or anything like that. It's just two people driving down the road and they're two Being married men. Being gay on the road Being. can be a bit of a problem. <laughs> I saw a gay ghost staring at me. Yeah, it's not, it's not like you just add the word. Yeah. And yeah, so that we did these stories and believe it or not, I got emails from people saying, what's with all the queer stuff? What's <laughs> it, why do you have, you know, it, it adds nothing to the story. Why do you have all these same sex things? And it was right around that time that we had, as a team, we were already thinking about putting together for Pride Month, uh, an episode that had every story would be written by someone from the LGBTQ community. And it was just, we're gonna celebrate Pride Month, not because, <laughs> that I just like that. I like that you pissed off somebody who complained. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And so I, I put a little disclaimer on the next episode, the, the episode before the Pride episode, and basically said, look, we will do these stories, and if you don't like them, you're free to not listen. And we, and, and I think I, tr I tried to inform our audience that, yeah, we've got voice actors and people on the show who terrifyingly enough are gay <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah we got some blowback from that there were people who canceled their subscriptions and uh, all that kind of stuff but and they, they would never say by the way this isn't uh, like i this is because i love freedom i like and, and i i i perceive these 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 uh sort of like the, the these when i get these signals i they 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 get ironically triggered by them and go like oh political correctness is coming like because there's like a and, and but I I I gotta say, as a pot-bellied forty-five-year-old straight white dude who has nothing to gain or lose, like I honestly, and this may be the most insulting compliment of all time, but it really struck me as listening to that episode just yesterday, and was like, I would I would recommend to a fan of like where I was going, like you should listen to this as like really well-produced, um, uh, well-written um, uh, horror stories that have a, a modern context to them, but they have a but they also have like a. A, a classy like foundation to them, a respect for the audio format and stuff like that. And I would go, actually, if you're going to start with anything, listen to the LG. It happens to be the LGBT. I would say like you'll find it that way, but it wouldn't be because it would be. It just happens to be. My point being that that in in addition to being inclusive, it's not like a handicap parking space. It's not. It's not this like thing of like let's be proactive and break the cycle, which is also fine. But you've managed to gracefully do this thing because you've had this commune of artists. You're people who love reading stories and writing stories they're all individuals uh snowflakes if you will um and and each of them comes to the table i assume and going like you know could i could i go here could i go there or could you represent this and that and you i'm i'm psychically osmotically interpreting are, the, are like me and that you would go yeah because why would i put up a wall against that and and the result is truly not obnoxious. It's not saccharine. It's not watered down. It's anything. It's like it has, it has all this extra flavor to it because it's it's there's something. I mean, look, fear, xenophobia, sex, fear. They all go kind of hand in hand, right? It's different from comedy. Um, uh, and and I, I, I guess that's a, like my, my remaining like discussion point is like, what the hell is it with? What do we in the in the in these times where we're actually trying to be sensitive to each other, and when the reality is that when we go to bed together and when we speak around campfires to each other, when we 
we, we, we want to get visceral reactions from each other. We want to we want to be able to cross thresholds. That's literally the definition of a story: crossing boundaries. Mm -hmm. And yet, in a very, and I'm not doing the old man thing where I'm like, oh, we can't have fun anymore because you're having fun, but you're not hurting anybody. It's very clear that you're not doing it in defiance. It's like it's very. It's two things are very clear when I listen to that podcast. You guys don't give a shit about like whether or not somebody might boycott or anything like that. It, it, there's no pandering happening. And the, uh, the next thing that's clear is that you definitely don't want to hurt anybody. I, I, like, I don't know how, how you could impart to somebody that we're listening, is, that, like, is there some key to the philosophy, like the algorithm that you run, or is it simply you don't think about it and overthought doesn't happen? Well, I fully agree, Dan, that I am pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 come on, come on. No, it's, yeah, it's definitely the latter. It's just, I don't care. And I, I know it's, I've, I've heard that lately. Some people say that as a straight person, if I say, look, I don't care if you're gay or straight or trans, and they say, well, that's not right. You got to be a little more sensitive. But no, to me, like you said, sex and horror are very intermingled. They're, they're very much Tell a part me about of it. it. <laughs> Maybe the more interesting way is that, like, what what's the kind of stuff that you is it you get like submissions? Like, so, what are what are the and you can say I don't want to talk about this because I don't want you to know how the sausage is made and you know uh, like but but um, is there so, like 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 what are the, do you have lines that you draw where like 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 rules in your head that you run things through so you go like you know what this is because this yeah I, like go ahead I'll stop asking the question so you can answer it. There aren't a lot of hard and fast rules. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'll do a story if it implies, let's say, a sexual assault or a rape, something that isn't gratuitous. We're not going to have a 12-minute segment where you hear a person describe the graphic moments of them being raped and stuff like that. So we, we guard that line. But I remember way back, I think in season three, we did a story. It was called Autopilot. And it basically told the story of something that you hear in the news every summer. And it's horrifyingly tragic, and it has to do with children being left in cars in the summertime. And so that's a story that I probably wouldn't do today because fearing all the blowback and people saying... Like we, we, I, we heard back from after that we did that show, somebody emailed me and said, are you going to keep doing stories where children are murdered? And we thought, I thought, well, the child wasn't murdered. It was a horrifying accident. But that's how his mind, as a father, right. he thought that. So, you know, we like, we like pushing people. And we, we say right at the top of every show, as, as Dan has so gracefully pointed out tonight <laughs> with his imitation of me. Yeah, it's, you know, I say, we do tales to frighten and disturb. And that's, that key word, disturb, is, I think, lost on a lot of people. Yeah. We want people not just to be, you know, chills up the spine, ooh, that's spooky, but we want people to be genuinely uncomfortable and unsettled. And yeah, yeah, and I think you phrase it in a way that it's like this, the most elegant kind of trigger warning that you could give, which is like, you're, it's something like, to paraphrase it, you're coming here to be frightened and disturbed on purpose, or something like that. There's yeah. like, yeah. like you're you're coming here to do that. <laughs> you're you're choosing to be frightened and disturbed for your own entertainment. Right, that's, there it that's is. That's a big yeah. part of it. So uh, yeah, they yeah. choose that. Uh, do you? I mean, uh, uh, wh oh boy, what uh, do you? Is it audio or horror that's more like if you had an opportunity to do more than uh, the audio? Uh, version of it, are you? Would you get? You're like, well, I like the scary stuff. Or are you more like, uh, I like audio storytelling, and it doesn't necessarily have to be horror, but that's the, that's the hot dog of of audio. Yeah, I think a horror or audio and horror go together better than probably any other format. Uh, again, just what I mentioned earlier about using your imagination and getting cues from the story to involve yourself in the story. But no, I. Uh, you know, doing it for seven years, I'd love to branch out. I had the the thrill of being on a podcast uh, produced by the aforementioned Alex Aldea about uh, called Deadly Manners, and it was a ten part series. Um, thank you very much. And it was uh, it's basically like uh, the movie Clue. It's a comedy whodunit murder mystery, and being able to do comedy and uh, play a bit of an over the top has been washed out actor in a role that was written <laughs> especially for me. <laughs> Was a, it was a real thrill. That was a lot of fun. So yeah, I think uh, 
horror will always be my first love, but yeah, it'd be fun to branch out and do voices on, you know, like animation, Rick and Morty and all that stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> Is this on? What? Well, it's funny you should mention that, David, because I actually have... Now, I know I did some goofing. I improvised some stuff, but I did write and polish a uh, story in which the character is you, David Cummings, telling a story called... Uh, and I'm telling you because you'll have to introduce it. Author Dan Harmon uh, will tell the story. I'm t the title is... Uh, uh, why I won't ever go back to Rick and Morty. Uh, 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 so then you do the introduction, and then I'll be you telling the story. So I'm me introducing you as me. Yeah. <laughs> In our final tale, author. The music. What's the come on, oh, God man? Damn music. Hey, wait, sorry. Just before we do this, could I give a shout out real quick? I'm oh, so sorry. Out. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I forgot about the shout out. We had a we had a fan that was gonna come. They they're not from here, and they're gonna come and see the show. But uh, they had a health incident that involved, I believe, a brain tumor, which uh, made them had to cancel their plans. They wanted to be here and couldn't. Um, so if you want uh, to help out Megan, who's dealing with some real shit, and uh, her friend Ruth, you go to the gf.me slash u slash mghbja. That's a GoFundMe. It's gf.me slash u slash mghbja. Sorry. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's, that's the worst, worst way to end a show. I'm so sorry. Sorry you couldn't be here. I'm sorry to do this to you, and now, back to the outro. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm sorry you couldn't make it. In our final tale, <laughs> we meet a man involved in producing a pretty funny show. Author Dan Harmon shares with us a tale, horrifyingly enough, about said show, and it's a story entitled why I'll never go back to Rick and Morty. My name is David Cummings. <laughs> I'm an actor, primarily working in the Canadian area. I don't toot my own horn. I like to have lots of sex with my big Canadian dick. <laughs> I enjoy the company of the ladies and a nice six pack of moose head. Well done. Mickey's Big Mouth. What did, what do we drink? Molson. Molson. Molson ice. <laughs> but what I've always wanted to do was be a voice actor on an adult swim cartoon called Rick and Morty. I never thought I could be a candidate for such a job. Little old me sitting in my shack on the North Pole. <laughs> but it's healthy to fantasize, and so I would pet my husky and look at my sled while whittling my kitchen furniture <laughs> out of my grandmother's snowshoes, which she donated to me after retiring from vaudeville. <laughs> Canadian vaudeville. Which, all right, no, I'm not going to tell you about that. That's a different story. So it was quite a surprise to me when my message on the local moose board got responded to with a strange handwritten scrawl. I asked the bartender, had anyone been arooned? <laughs> so, I don't know why it's so, Shame. why is it, why am I allowed to, I don't know. Shame. Why am I abusive? It doesn't, like it's because you're nice and so I'm abusing you, it makes no sense. I tried, I gave you a big dick, remember? I... 
<laughs> like, I don't think of you as a, I'm thinking of me as the bad person. Like, that's my, okay, all right, sorry. <sighs> it's a, uh, the bartender's answer was even more weird <laughs> than my question. Uh, no, wait, no, weirder. So it's funny you should ask because no. <laughs> when I got home to my answering machine, I had the strangest message. It said it was from an Emmy-winning television producer. But I couldn't tell if it was fake. My friends like to play Canadian pranks. <laughs> but it went like this. Uh, how, how's it going there, eh? Uh, I, I hear you're, 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 what, you're gonna be on the old Rick and Morty there? Oh, geez, eh? So, uh, yeah, I'll come over with some Olsen and we'll talk about it there. Beep. I backed up from the machine with horror. If that message was from a producer of Rick and Morty, why would he be coming over? <laughs> and why would he be speaking like me? I ran to the front door and rubbed it with my hand on the cold window, unsticking my flesh from the, from the frozen pane of glass. I p poked my eyes outside and saw, anyways, later I was, I, f I look, <laughs> it's, it's getting late. I, I f found a plane ticket in a box with a thumb. I would have described it longer and more scary, but that's, I gotta get the bullet points because we gotta, we gotta hit this. I found a plane ticket in a box with a thumb. There was a thumb, there was a human thumb. And a, <laughs> and a plane ticket. <sighs> Flying in to the production office, I wondered to myself, what should I do? I didn't know what I was about to see. When I got off the elevator, four children in clown makeup <laughs> with smiles wider than their faces. That's like big thing in the, uh, that's like, like always, everyone has got smiles. <laughs> Greeted me with macchiatos. <laughs> You're here to work on the show. I couldn't stand the feelings in my boots. I wanted to run away, but I also needed to be polite. <laughs> that sounds good, I said, and they took me back to the VO booth, where what I saw will stay with me for the rest of my life. 300 pounds of human intestine, in a writhing mass of aborted foot bone, surgically altered, all of it smiling with smiles and children bigger than the children's smiles, <laughs> lips curled in a surgical foot intestine with aborted things and the little implication of the threat of rape but not taking pleasure in it. A writhing sea. I dove in because I felt pressured. And the microphone was turned on and I said, I'm David Cummings. Hello. I, there was no script. I just said it. <laughs> Silence entered the room. And all I heard over the speaker was, that's good. Can we do another take? <laughs> okay, no, that's not a good ending. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. I like that. Here's my favorite kind of ending. It's a, a, but it's a, okay, go rewind to the, a sea of intestines and bones. But the one thing that will always be the reason I will never forget what I was looking at 
the one thing that I can never explain, no matter how hard I try. The reason I am posting this to Reddit from an asylum <laughs> is because the engineer had a hat on with a maple leaf. Uh, I see you can't riff it. I, there's always like the, there's like the, well, the one thing that will keep me up at night is that he knew my name. And then there's like a punchline. I can't. And that is why he'll never go back to Rick and, that's and why Morty. I'll never go back. Right. And why we bid you tonight on Harmontown, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! We bid you good night. Thank you so much. For David something. Cummings, everybody. David Cummings. Leonard Miria, Spencer Crittenden, Dan Harmon, Zach McKeever, Nolan Fabrica, Sarah Hill, Chris Flora. I have been Brandon Johnson. Thank you all so much for coming to the lovely downtown Dynasty Theater. It's been the same since the beginning. Yeah, we're all players in this game. I'm winning. I keep on losing my mind. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.